dead in a Paiute's grave. Well, that guy's awful slow getting there. I feel sorry for him. Always in reach and never able to do anything about it. I got a feeling she could do better. You're boasting. What do you have, whiskey? What do you got? Whiskey. You ever see such a guy? All winter I've been thinking, and all he's got is whiskey. That's rotten, ain't it? Rotten. Two glasses in a bottle. <clears throat> well, what's on your boy's mind? Something have to be on my mind. Well, there's mud in your eye. Friendly cuss, ain't he? Uh, he's just getting around to asking if his girl is still in town. His girl? If you mean Rose Maitland, no. She went to Frisco the first stage out this spring. That's a lie. She said she'd wait. That's a fact. What a town. It's my guess the married women run around. Oh, no tar and feathers, no rails. They just righteously made her feel uncomfortable. Not that she ever did anything, but they just couldn't get over being afraid she might. Say, what is it to do in this town, anyway? Well, unless you want to get in line and woo Drew's daughter. We don't. The only other unmarried woman I know is 82, blind, and a Paiute. That leaves you five choices. Eat, sleep, drink, play poker, or fight. Well, you can shoot some pool. I got a new table in the back room. That's just great. I see Risley's still around. The sheriff? I thought he never got closer than Reno, except on special calls. Hey, it wouldn't be that rustling folks were talking about last fall. Could be. Gonna be a kind of touchy subject, huh? They don't like to talk about it except with fellas they sleep with. Afraid they'll find out of somebody they know? Maybe. They lose some more this spring? Some. How many? About 600 head. They got any leads? They picked up a small herd trail and signs of shod horses down in the south draw. Wouldn't everybody know if there were strangers around? Sure. And there hasn't been any. Except you two. That ain't funny. Now who's touchy? You're talking about my business. Stick to my pleasures. No offense, Carter. I just want to let you know where you two stand. Listen. Take it easy, Gil. He's had five whiskeys and he's sore about Rose Maple. Keep your mouth shut about Rose, see? Okay, Gil. I was just joking. You can take a joke, can't you? Sure, I can take a joke. Some jokes. Lost any over your way? No more in the winter and the coyotes would account for. You haven't got any ideas, have you, Farnley? Except not to have ideas. Make that clear. There are a lot of things around here ain't clear. You still talking about rustling? And strangers. happy, don't he? He just needed exercise. Whenever he gets low in spirits or confused in his mind, 
He doesn't feel right until he's had a fight. It doesn't matter whether he wins or not. He feels fine again afterwards. Ain't that guy got there yet? Oh, holy cow, now I'm gonna have to start all over again. Somebody's sure in a hurry. Darby use his fist? No, oh, a bottle. That's all right, then. Hey, lay off finally, will you? Why should I? Because you hit him pretty hard. You made him look foolish. Did I really get him? I thought you busted his neck. No fool. <laughs> well, no good. Shot right through the head, I tell you. What? Harry? What had happened? Down in the southeast corner of the valley, about eight miles from his ranch. Did you see it? No, sir, but Olsen did. He found him laying in a dry wash in the sun. Shot right through the head. Uh, when? Well, about 2 o'clock, but he must have been shot a lot earlier because they picked his horse up clear over near the ranch road. Any cattle missing? Well, they couldn't tell. There have been so many working that range down there. Did Olson send you for us? No, sir. He's in such a big hurry. He just yelled at me to go get the sheriff. Hey, get, get. Rustlers? Looks that way. Who was it they got? Kincaid. Kincaid? Farley's buddy? Yeah. They've been working together ever since they were kids. All the way from the panhandle to Jackson's Hole. Sure, I knew him. Oh, short, dark Irishman. Didn't say very much. Liked to sing a lot. These fellows will go a long way to get the guy that killed Larry Kincaid. Lynchin? My judge. Even if they have got a five-hour start, it's a good 500 miles to the first border. Besides, there may be a bunch of them. It won't help Kincaid now to get yourself killed. That kid Green ain't got no idea which way they went. Better wait till we know what we're doing. We're all with you about Kincaid. You know that, son. Only we ought to take our time and form this posse right. So if we go, we're sure to get what we go after. Okay. Thank you, posse. Somebody better get the sheriff first thing, and Judge Tyler. Oh, what do we want with old Tyler and his trial? Yeah, one good fast job without no legal papers, and that's all there is to it. Remember, this ain't just rustling. It's murder. Wait a minute, men. Don't let's go off half-cocked and do something we'll be sorry for. We want to act in a reasoned and legitimate manner, not like a lawless mob. Trouble with you, Davies, you've been storekeeping too long. You don't see no profit in this. Now, if any of you fellas had offered to buy the rope from him, <laughs> if we go, you're going with us, fat gut. Brother, I wouldn't miss it. Only thing would bring me out any faster would be your necktie party. Who knows? Maybe this is yours. I'll remember that and see you handle the rope. Down in Texas, where I come from, we just go out and get a man and string him up. That's right. I say stretch him. Think just a rustler we're after. It's a murderer. Larry Kincaid, one of the finest, most God-fearing men that ever lived, is lying out there right now with a bullet hole in his head. If you let this go by, there won't be nothing safe around here. Our cattle, our homes, not even our women folks. I'm with you, Farnley. I'm going to get me a gun and some rope, and I'll be right back. And if nobody else will do it, me and you will do it ourselves. Count me in, too. Come on, boys! Get your guns! Don't oh, listen, oh, listen to me, men! Hey, don't lose your hands like this! You mustn't do this thing! You must not! Now, shut up, Grandma. Nobody expects you to go. Don't take it so hard, Mr. Davies. You did all you could. Will you do me a favor, Carter? Well, that depends. I'm sending Joyce here for the sheriff and Judge Tyler. I want you to go along and help explain. Well, you know how Hart and I stand here. We came in at a bad time. I've got to stay here and see if I can't stop them till they realize what they're doing. If I can make this thing regular, that's all I ask. Come on, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Do you know Mapes? 
The one they call Butch? Yes. The sheriff's made him deputy for times he's out of town. And we don't want Mapes. Well, he said I was to be the executioner, so I come all fixed. Think I don't know my business, huh? <laughs> You don't look very well, Mr. Davies. Maybe you'd better stay home and rest up for the funeral. Maybe you could get the flowers. Boys wouldn't begrudge a few flowers, even for a rustler, so long as it's a good dead one. <laughs> Done. I'm not going, Father. I don't wish any argument. Do as I say. Perhaps this will do what I've obviously failed to do. Make a man of you. Scrape your boots, put your hat on your hand, and straighten your wig. Well? Why, is the judge at home, ma'am? Yes. Could we see him? You got business? No, we just dropped in for tea. Very funny. Mr. Davies sent us, ma'am. It's awfully important. It's not regular office hours. Judge's better half. His housekeeper. His wife's dead. Well, you can see why there are times when the judge don't seem to be able to make up his own mind. Come in! Come in! He says, come in! Well, well, Carter, how are things out in your neck of the woods? All right, I guess, Judge. You don't appear to have been pining away exactly since last I saw you. And what can I do for you, gentlemen? We're here for Mr. Davies. Oh, how is my friend Davies? Well, I trust. Yes, but could we see you alone for a minute, Judge? Oh, a matter of a private nature, eh? Yes, sir. Mr. Davies said particularly just you and Sheriff Risley. Risley ain't here. He deputized me. Where'd the sheriff go? Down to Kincaid's ranch early this morning. When will he be back? He didn't say. A couple of days, maybe. But anything you can tell him, you can tell me. Sure, we know that, Butch, but we're here for Mr. Davies. If the judge thinks it's your job, he'll tell you. Certainly, maybe. Certainly. All right, but if it's a sheriff's job, call me, see? Naturally. Well, what can I do for you gentlemen? Well, it ain't so much that Mr. Davies don't want him to go, it's just he wants to make sure a posse's sworn in to bring him in for a fair trial. That's why I wanted you and the sheriff to hurry as quick as you can. Confounded man, the sheriff's not here. Today, of all days. You can talk to them, Judge. They'll listen to you. No, no, no. That's not my job. I haven't any police authority. Well, where are you going, Mapes? There's a posse forming, Judge. In case you hadn't heard, that's Sheriff's work, ain't it? Well, that's no posse. That's a lawless lynching mob. It'll be a posse when I get there. I'm going to deputize them all proper. But you can't do that. Risley's the only one empowered to deputize. Should we tell Davies you're coming, Judge? Yes, yes, of course. I suppose I'll have to. But doggone it, this is the sheriff's job, not mine. Smith, I don't guess so. Oh, you better come along, Sparks. Ain't every day we have a hanging in a town that's dead as this one. You won't have to do nothing. All the real work signed up. I just thought we ought to have a reverend along, because there's going to be some praying done. Maybe you're right, Mr. Smith. 
Maybe somebody ought to go along to feel the way I do. Davy's a lone near his Bible, so all the reading will be done right at the burial. Thank you, sir, but I knows my text without the book. They're kidding you, Sparks. I know, sir. But maybe Mr. Smith's accidentally right. Maybe I ought to go along. There's an old horse in my shed you can use. Thank you, sir. I'll go and fetch it. Yeah! Here comes Ma! Come on, we're ready to go. Hiya, boys. How are you doing? Need more than buggy wagons all night, Ma. Whoa. Well, boys, what are we waiting for now? Judge Tyler. Davies asked him to come over. I understand how it is, men. My old friend, Larry Kincaid. One of the finest and noblest... Cut the stop and Tyler. All we want is your blessing. Well, of course, you can't flinch from what you believe to be your duty. But certainly, you don't want to act hastily in the same spirit of lawlessness that begot this foul crime. Ah, uh, Judge, before you get ready to act, them rustlers will be clear down over the Rio. One more word out of you, Smith, and I'll have you up for impeding the course of justice. Judge, you can't impede, but don't move anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Jenny Greer, a woman, to lend yourself to this. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 listen. Listen, men. I've just found out the Sheriff Grizzly's already down at Kincaid. That right, Judge? Yes. He's been there all morning. Yes. So you see, probably everything's being attended to right now, legally. All you'll get out of it is a long, hard ride. It'll be dark before long and mighty cold. My advice is to come inside, have a drink, let's wait till we hear from the Sheriff. Drinks on the house, but only one round. I'm not filling any bucket bellies. I'll make it two. Any of you fellas want to stay in town, I can take six. You don't mind sleeping double. No, it's not as if you were giving up, boys. It's just good sense. Harley, come back. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You don't have to worry, Jeff. This business is going to be taken care of. Yeah, I know who's going to take care of it. Me. I tell you now, whoever shot Larry Kincaid ain't coming back here for you to fuddle with your lawyer's tricks for six months and then be let off because Davies or some other whining old woman claim he ain't bad at heart. Kincaid didn't have six months to decide if he wanted to die. Disbanding men? Davies has just about convinced us, Major Tetley. Of what, Mr. Davies? Why, of, uh, of, uh... I take it you were acting on the assumption the Raiders left for the South Draw. Why, yes, of course. They didn't. They went east by Bridges Pass. That's through the mountains? Over the old stage road, Pike's Hole. That's 8,000 feet up. Approximately. They'd be crazy to go that way. Not so crazy, perhaps, Mr. Davies, knowing how crazy it would look to us. How come you're so sure, Tetley? Pancho saw them. He was coming back from Pike's and had trouble getting by them in the past. See, he didn't see me, I think. So he was hollowed down the hollow, and I drive my horse out of the way. So when I, at first I think I say hello, and then I think he's pointing how to drive the cattle then. Cattle? Sure, why do you think I had to get out of his road? Well, go on. When I see what mark those cattle heck, I'd be very, very quiet. What kind of marks were they? Oh, in the throat, three little whatchamacallim. That's Kincaid's mark. The dirty rat. Let him get away from this. Let him get away from this. Let him get away from this. How many were there? Forty head. I mean rustlers. Three. Why were you so long in bringing us this word, Major? I knew my son would want to go along. He was out on the range. Major Tetley, you mustn't let this be a lynching. It's a case of what I choose, Davies. Promise me you'll bring him in for a fair trial. I promise I'll abide by the majority will. Tetley, you know what's legal in this case as well as I do. All we ask is a posse to act under a properly constituted officer of the law. That's where I come in. Risley made me a deputy. In that case, Mr. Mapes, suppose you deputize the rest of us. Well, that's not legal. No deputy has the right to deputize. How about it, boys? Suits me, Butch. Go ahead and pray. Mapes, you're violating the law. Raise your right hands.
I hereby solemnly swear that I am duly sworn in as a deputy in the case of the murder of Larry Kincaid, and I'm willing to abide by the decisions of the majority, so help me God. Say I do. I do. Get my horse. I'm going with them. Then get down to Kincaid's. Get the sheriff. We'll stop here for a minute, gentlemen, and breathe our horses. Winder, take one man with you. Go up to the top of that ridge and see what you can see. Doing this in the middle of the night's crazy. I thought you liked excitement. I got nothing particular against hanging a murdering rustler. It's just I don't like doing it in the dark. There's always some crazy fool who loses his head and start hanging everybody in sight. Us? Funnier things have happened. Well, we didn't have to come. What kind of funny if we hadn't, wouldn't it? Besides, I like to pick my own bosses. Whether we picked them or not, we sure got them. That's what I don't like. That Smith and Bartlett shooting off their mouths. Farnley. And that renegade Tedley. Strutting around his uniform, pretending he's so much. He never even saw the South till after the war. Been only long enough to marry that kid's mother and get run out of the place by her folks. I figured there was something fishy about him, dressing up like that. Sure. What are you supposed to be living in this neck of the woods if you didn't have something to hide? Come on, let's get out of here before we all freeze to death. Or else give it up. You'd be the laughing stock of the country if you went home now, just on account of a little cold. That's right. But I'm telling you, this rope's gonna have to be thawed out before it's fit to use. Why am I coming in a little closer, Mr. Carter? Oh, come on. I'm finding it kind of lonesome myself. Powerful cold and highly. I got a blanket. You want it? Oh, thank you just the same, Mr. Carter, but it takes all my hands to stay on this old horse. Better have a couple of shots. I never use it. I sure wish we was well out of this here business. It's a way of spending time. It's man taking on himself the vengeance of the Lord. Think the Lord cares much about what's happening up here tonight? He marks the sparrows fall. I see my own brother Lynch, Mr. Carter. I want nothing but a little fella. But sometimes now wakes up dreaming about it. Had he done what they picked him up for? I don't know. Nobody never did know for sure. Well, a couple of shots more whiskey can't do my soul any harm. Darby sure sells rotten liquor. Warms you up, though. Feels like fire creeping in the short grass. 
Yes, I'll just let her spread a little while. Put out that light, you fool. You want to give us away? Who to? Now chuck that butter, I'll plug you. And start some for every hole you make, I'll make two. Look like you're going to have a lot of shooting to do, Mr. Fong. Listen, something's coming. Must be drunk. Nobody put a drunken idiot to drive down the grade in the dark like that. I thought it was a stick-up. Oh, if those horses weren't a sight smarter than you, that coach would be at the bottom of the canyon right now. Rose Mapen. Hello, everybody. This is my husband, Mr. Swanson, of San Francisco. And, uh, my sister-in-law, Miss Swanson. Did you just get married, Rose? Just today. <laughs> no wonder you were in such a hurry. <laughs> my name is Tetley, sir. And I can quite understand why Miss Rose is in such a hurry to show the other ladies what can be done in the way of matrimony. Thank you, sir. Say, what's everybody doing up here this time of night? <clears throat> why, uh... Art shot. What? Well, bring him over here. Hey, let's take a look. Give him a hand there, babe. Put him down right. Easy with him. Now, easy. There, yeah, move over there. Give him a hand. You had an order to come barging out like that in the dark, especially. I couldn't tell who it was, and everybody yelling like that. Shut up. Shut up. Here, I'm good at this sort of thing. Look, the women have to watch this. There's room in the stagecoach for you, Huck. Yeah, I better get you on back to Darby's and get some hot food into you. I'm all right. Come on, be a good boy. Don't be stubborn. Yeah, don't be a fool. Mind your own business. Bring this horse over, will She's white now and kind of new. Yeah, looks that way, don't it? I take it you've had the privilege of knowing Miss Mapin before she became my wife? That's right. That possibly you imagined at the time there was some understanding between you? Yeah, sure. My wife is a very impulsive woman. That's what I'm saying. Needless to say, I'm pleased to regard any friend of my wife as a friend of my own. However, I don't need to remind you that the pleasure of such an acquaintance 
Depends upon the recognition by all parties of the fact that Miss Maitland is now my wife. She must be given a little time to become accustomed to her new responsibilities. As yet, I must confess that I'm jealous of her least attention. You'll forgive me, I know. A bridegroom is prone to be overly susceptible for a time. Later, when we've had time to get accustomed to our new relations, I shall be delighted to welcome you and others of my wife's friends to our home in San Francisco, if it is still her desire. Until then, Superior little. Looks like Rose has took unto herself a lot of trouble. Oxbow. There they are, gentlemen. I suggest we avoid any shooting or rough work till they've had a chance to tell it their way. Mr. Mapes and I will do the talking. The one that got Kincaid is mine. Don't forget that. He's yours when we show up. Ten men will go with Mr. Gray and come up from behind. Bartlett, take six men and work through those woods back of the cabin. Gerald, you and Farley and the rest will go with me. Would you like a gun, Mr. Davies? No, thank you. Sparks? Thank you. No, sir, Major Tetley. As you choose. Get up! Drop it! Now put up your hands. That's all right. It's all right, brother, you will. Take it easy, mister. Stay where you are and put your hands up. Gerald, collect 
the guns. What do you want? What are you trying to do? Shut up. We'll tell you when we want you to talk. This ain't no stick-up, brother. This is a posse, if that means anything to you. Well, we haven't done anything. Get out! Get him up. Pile them up. Get on. Get in. All right, get in. Well, at least you might tell us what we're being held for. I'd rather you told us. We must be pretty important, or else awfully dangerous. It ain't that you're so dangerous, it's just that most of the men ain't never seen a real triple hanging. A hanging? Well, what have we done? Aren't you even going to tell us what we're accused of? Rustling. Ever hear of it? Rustling? And murder. Murder? Uh, Mr. Martin, uh, what did we do? It's all right, Dad. There's some mistake. Remember me? He's talking to you, mister. No, sorry. He don't speak English. I got a different notion. I'll make him talk. That'll do, finally. Listen, your wife had enough of your playing God Almighty. Who picked you for this job, anyhow? We got him, I say, let's swing him before we all freeze to death. If you're cold, here's the fire. Warm yourself. And I advise you to control your tongue, too. And we'll get along better. Who's boss of this outfit? I am. And your name? Donald Martin. Where are you from? Pike's Hole. That's a lie. This gentleman's from Pike's Hole. Would you like to change your story? I just moved in three days ago. I'm on Dave Baker's place up in the North End. Dave Baker moved out four years ago, and the place is a wreck. The barns are all falling down, the sagebrush is sticking up through the porch. Well, I bought the place from him for $4,000 in Los Angeles last month. <laughs> then, mister, you was robbed. Well, that may be. Surely it's not so far to Pike's Hole that you can't go over there and find out. My wife's there right now. And my two kids. That's really too bad. Just too bad. Well, even in this godforsaken country, I've got a right to a trial. You're getting a trial. The 28 are the only kind of judges murderers and rustlers get in what you call this godforsaken country. So far, the jury don't like your story. Well, I'm not going to say another word without a proper hearing. Suit yourself, son. But this is all the hearing you're likely to get, short of the last judgment. Have you any cattle up here with you? Hey, Mr. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask you again. Yes, I have. How many? Fifty head. Where'd you get them? From Mr. Kincaid. That's just what we figured, son. But I'm no rustler, though. I didn't steal them. I bought them and paid hard cash for them. My own cattle were so bad, I didn't want to risk bringing them up. So I sold them out at Salinas. And I had to stock up again. Well, you can wait, can't you? Till you can see Kincaid? Or ask about me over at Pike's Hole. That's a good one. He wants us to wait and ask Larry Kincaid. Good. 
Go ahead, do you, Martin? You're a cool one, all right. You know as well as we do, Kincaid can't tell us anything. He's dead. Dead? What do you think we're up here for? Well, how should I know? He was all right yesterday afternoon. Listen, why don't you stop this farce and take us in if you think we had anything to do with it? Cause the law's slow and careless around here sometimes. We're here to see it speeded up. Who sent you up here? The sheriff. That ain't true. Let's don't get started again. It's getting late. The sheriff didn't even know we were coming. I beg your pardon. I should have said the deputy sheriff. Listen, men. I'm not trying to obstruct justice. But just as this young man says, this is a farce. And it'll be murder if you carry it through. All he's asking is what every man is entitled to, a fair trial. You say you're innocent, Martin, and I, for one, believe you. Then I guess you're the only one, Arthur. If there's any justice in your proceedings, Tetley, it would only be after a confession. And they haven't confessed. They say they're innocent, and you haven't proved they're not. Shut up. Have you a bill of sale for those cattle? Well, no, I haven't. But Mr. Kincaid said it'd be all right. I couldn't find him at the ranch house. He was out on the range. He didn't have a bill of sale with him. He said he'd mail it to me. Moore? Yep. How long have you been riding for Kincaid? Six years. Ever known him selling the cattle without a bill of sale? No. Can't say that I ever did. Of course, I can't remember ever had he sold in six years. But it's customary for him to give a bill of sale. Yep. Ever known him selling the cattle after spring roundup? This year and the other year? I can answer that. I heard him say myself just a couple of days ago. He wouldn't sell a head to nobody this spring. Well. I know it looks pretty bad giving a dead man for a witness, but it's the truth. You don't believe me? Would you in my place? Well, I'd find out. I'd do a lot of finding out before I'd risk hanging three men who might be innocent. If it were only rustling, maybe, but with murder? No. What are you trying to do, Tetley? Play cat and mouse with them? I would prefer confession, Martin. <laughs> If you got any doubts, Tedley, I say let's call off this party. Take it back to the judge like Davies wants. This is only slightly any of your business, my friend. Remember that? Hanging's any man's business that's around. If your stomach for justice is cooling, Carter, I advise you to leave now before we proceed any further. Otherwise, your interruptions are going to become very tiresome. I still don't like it. Hanging murders is one thing, but to keep guys you don't know for sure did it. Stand around sweating while you shoot your mouth off, that's another. Take it easy. This ain't our picnic. If you keep on butting in, I got a hunch it might be. They call this old man Dad. Is he your father? No. Speak up, man. You're taking it like a woman. Keep your chin up. You can only die once, son. No, he works for me. Uh, uh, I didn't do it. I ain't even got a gun. And who did? Uh, uh, the Mexican did it. Uh, he told me so. Uh, no. I saw him do it. Juan couldn't have done anything. I was with him all the time. Uh, uh, yes, he did, Mr. Martin. He was asleep, and he didn't mean to tell me. Uh, when I was awakened, I heard him talking about it. The old man's feeble-minded. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He invents things. Well, if you've got to go through with this filthy comedy, you can at least let him alone, can't you? Shut up! <laughs> Lay off, mate! First, he won't talk. Now he talks too much. What's his name? Halva Hardwick. And the other? Juan Martinez. No, it ain't. Still don't remember me, eh? I'm talking to you, mister. I'm sorry. The devil you don't. Your name's Francisco Morez, and the vigilantes would like to get hold of you. He was a gambler. They want him for murder. How about that? I don't know. Stick together nice, don't they? Why do you keep asking me all these questions? You don't believe anything I tell you. There's truth in lies, too, if you can get enough of them. What do you know about the old man? I don't know. He's in the Army. Confederate or Union? I don't know. He's not clear about it himself. Maybe both at different times. A half-wit in the Army? Attention! Oh, he's forgotten. Not that. I'll make a deal with you, Martin. 
Tell us which of you shot Kincaid, and the other two can wait. None of us killed anybody. And that's all, I guess. Bring him along. You don't mean you're going to do it, really. You got to wait, I tell you. You got to wait. You got to give us some time. You got to give us some time. Remember, the Mexican's mine. My kids. One of them is just a baby. There's a little baby, and they haven't got a thing to go on. Nothing. I've got to write a letter. If you're human at all, you'll give me time to write a letter. That ain't asking much, Tetley. They're scared. They're trying to put it off, that's all. Yeah, do you want Tyler and the sheriff to get here and the job not done? They won't come in time. I believe you're right, Mr. Davies. Though I doubt if you want to be. What time is it? Five minutes after three. All right. We don't want to give anyone cause for complaint. With your permission, gentlemen, we'll wait till daylight. Bring him back. That'll give you time, Reverend, to finish your business at leisure. Sure, and then time to think it over. Well, I can't ride like this. Very well, I'm tired. Oiga, viejo, dígales que tengo hambre que hablan mucho. Que se van a matar, que maten ya no siquiera. He says he wants to eat. He's much hungry from so much, much of the talk. Thank you. Why, look, fresh beef. Oh, Ma, fix up a spread for everybody. Can't call it stealing because the time it's at, there won't be any owners. <laughs> thinking about sheriff he's an awful long time getting anywhere suppose he don't get here at all that's what i'm thinking A gray camp meeting in the promised land. Walk together, children. Don't you get weary? Walk together, children. Don't you get weary? Walk together, children. Don't you get weary? There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. Wine to meet your savior. Don't you get weary? 
Trying to meet your savior. Don't I'm care. not disputing that fact, Mr. Davies. It may be a fine letter. But if it's an honest letter, it's none of my business to read it. And if it isn't, I don't want it. Is that my letter you're showing? Yes. Yeah. What right have you got to show my letter? Don't raise your voice that way, Rustler. He's right, Smith. I told him I'd keep it for him. All I asked you to do was make sure it was delivered. I'm sorry. I was just trying to prove that you were... It's enough to be hanged by a bunch of bullying outlaws without having your private thoughts handed around to them for a joke. I said I'm sorry. I was merely trying... I don't care what you were doing. I didn't write that letter to be passed around. It's none of these murderers' business. I made no promise, son. I thought there was one white man among you, but I was wrong. Give me my letter. I'll see that she gets it. Oh, I wouldn't have her touch it now. In that case, give him back the letter. Your wife ought to hear from you, son. None of us could be as kind and understanding as this letter. She'll want to keep it for your children. I'm sorry. Hey, the Max! Get out! He might have a... Better keep an eye on... his gun. Well, I guess we know now, don't we? Look. See, that's Larry Kincaid's gun. Where did you get this? Somebody will take this bullet out of my leg, I'll tell you. Ha! So he speaks American. In ten other languages, my dear. But I don't tell anything I don't want to in any of them. My leg, please. I wish to stand upright when you come to your pleasure. Somebody will lend me a knife, I'll take it out myself. Don't give no knife. He can throw a knife better than most men can shoot. Better than any of you, no doubt. But if you're afraid, I promise to give the knife back. Handle first. I'll do it. Polite, but has no stomach for blood, eh? It was very fine shooting, my friend. You should try again with that one. Now, where'd you get that gun? Found it. Where? Lying in the road. You're a liar. I thought we might find somebody to send it back by. You're a liar. And you're a blind fool. I asked you where you got it. No, sorry. No, that's the truth. He did find it. Undoubtedly. Won't you even read it? Is it because you've made up your mind, or because you believe everybody else has, and you're afraid to stand up for what you feel is right? You heard what Martin said about showing his letter? Oh, 
What does it matter to the man or his wife? Who sees this letter if it saves him from hanging? It's a beautiful letter. Read it, and you'll know he's not the kind of man that could steal or kill. Maybe. But all that kind of argument in the world can't stand up against branded cattle, no bill of sale, and a dead man's gun. Gentlemen, I suggest we act as a unit, so there can be no question of mistaken reprisals. Mr. Davies, are you willing to abide by a majority decision? Well, how about the rest of you people? Sure. sure. I already ruled the thing. Everybody who's with Mr. Davies are putting this thing off and turning it over to the courts? Step over there. Excuse me. Seven. Not a majority, I believe, Mr. Davy. Any other message you'd like to leave, Martin? I'd like to make a confession. I didn't do that. And about time. To a priest. There's no priest here. This man can hear me and take it to a priest. All right. Get along with it. Bring him along. That must have been an awfully busy life. Finally, you, Gabe Hart, and Jellard will whip the horses out. No, not me. Any volunteers? I'll do it. No one else will. I won't do it. You'll do it. I... I can't. We'll see to it that you can. The kid's seen enough already. Why don't you let him alone? This is not your affair, Carter. Thank you, just the same. I'll have no female boys bearing my name. You'll do your part, 
and say nothing more. What did he say? Oh, I know, Priest. For God's sake, man, at least say whether we'd better wait. Well, I know, Priest. I don't know. No, thanks. I'll give you two minutes to pray. Time's up. Mr. Davis, will you find someone you can trust to look after my wife and children? You better take some older woman along. It's not going to be easy. Don't worry. Your family will be all right. My parents are dead, but Miriam's living in Ohio. Kincaid didn't want to sell those cattle, so maybe his wife will buy them back for enough to cover that travel. Pile them up. I suppose it's no good telling you again that we're innocent. No good. It's not for myself I'm asking. Other men with families have had to die for this sort of thing. It's too bad, but it's justice. Justice? What do you care about justice? You don't even care whether you've got the right men or not. All you know is you've lost something and somebody's got to be punished. I tell you, there's nobody to look out for them. They're in a strange place. Can't you understand that, you butcher? This is a fine company for a man to die with. Shut up! You shut up! You shut up! Are you ready, Mr. Mapes? shooting about. We got him, Sheriff. It's all right. 
right, Sheriff. Everything's been attended to. What are you talking about? Kent Cage murderers. We got all three of them. And we hung them, too, Sheriff. Ah. Larry Kincaid's not dead. Not dead. But we just... Well, I just left Larry Kincaid with the doctor at Pike's Hole. Caught the fellows who shot him, too. But, Sheriff, they had Larry's cattle down there. They even had his gun. Give me that badge. Mr. Davies, I know you well enough to know that you didn't have anything to do with this. I'm depending on you to tell me who did. All but seven. God better have mercy on you. You won't get any from me. All right, let's go. If you've got no objections, Mr. Davies, I'd like to read Martin's letter now. It'd be a good idea if a lot of people read it. Ask me, that Tepe's the one we ought to lynch. You're a great one for hanging, ain't you, Smith? That's why you kept them waiting so long. I saw your face. It was the face of a depraved, murderous beast. There are only two things that have ever meant anything to you. Power and cruelty. You can't feel pity. You can't even feel guilt. In your heart, you knew those men were innocent, yet you were cold crazy to see them hanged. To make me watch it. I could have stopped you with a gun, just as any other animal can be stopped from killing, but I couldn't do it because I'm a coward. <laughs> Aren't you glad you made me go, Father? Weren't you proud of me? How does it feel to have begun a weakling, Major Tetley? Does it make you afraid that there may be some weakness in you, too, that other men might discover and whisper about? Open the door, Major. I want to see your face. I want to know how you feel now. wife. Even Mapes chipped in. I didn't know he was showing his face. He ain't. He sent it by Sparks. It reminds me I put in 25 bucks a piece for us. How much they got? About 500. <laughs> I'm 
bad for a husband who don't know any better to buy cattle in the spring without a bill of sale. Maybe you ought to read this letter, too. You know I can't read. To you. My dear wife, Mr. Davies will tell you what's happening here tonight. He's a good man and has done everything he can for me. I suppose there's some other good men here too, only they don't seem to realize what they're doing. They're the ones I feel sorry for, because it'll be over for me in a little while, but they'll have to go on remembering for the rest of their lives. Man just naturally can't take the law into his own hands and hang people without hurting everybody in the world. Because then he's just not breaking one law, but all laws. Law's a lot more than words you put in a book. Our judges or lawyers or sheriffs you hire to carry it out. It's everything people ever have found out about justice and what's right and wrong. It's the very conscience of humanity. There can't be any such thing as civilization unless people have a conscience. Because if people touch God anywhere, where is it except through their conscience? And what is anybody's conscience except a little piece of the conscience of all men that ever lived? I guess that's all I've got to say except kiss the babies for me and God bless you. Your husband, Donald. Going. He said he wanted his wife to get this letter, didn't he? Said there was nobody to look after the kids, didn't he? 